We got plenty of room. So hit the subscribe button and join the fun. Now under the discussion of MASH. And what we're going to talk about is the characters that left the show and who replaced them. And I'm going to do it in the order that they left, that they were replaced, not the order they left. Because we all know that Colonel Blake left first, but Trapper was replaced first before Colonel Blake was replaced. Uh, Wayne Rogers played Trapper John McIntyre. Now there's several stories on why he left the show. Uh, some say he left because he was up for the part of Hawkeye Pierce, but they convinced him to take Trapper and said, you'll have equal billing, you'll have equal lines, all that different stuff. But it, clear, it became clear early on that Alan Alda was the star of the show and nothing against Wayne Rogers and the other actors, but Alan Alda is just, he is, he was the star. He had star, he, he was, he was an amazing actor. Again, they all were, but you got to go with Alan Alda there. He didn't like that. He also, he never had a contract, he said. And when he went to go sign the contract, he read some of the stuff. He didn't like some of the wording. He said, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm going to try different things. I can, you know, he was also a financial whiz. He could do that. So he left the show. He never got his send off. Um, so there's that because it was filmed. He left after this filming of season three. Uh, Trapper was, was a, a dedicated surgeon. He thumbed his nose at the military. He was Hawkeye's right hand man. He was, he was a perfect match for Hawkeye. He was, so this was, this is what they, they had to get it right when they replaced him. They, they, it, they had to nail it because people had to accept the new character coming in because it was so important for Hawkeye to have that, that companion, that, that comrade, that, that someone who he could feed off and, you know, just, again, it, it, it had to work. And they replaced it with BJ Honeycutt played by Mike Farrell. And I'm going to say they did a really good job. Even though Mike Farrell, he was very similar to BJ, but he was different too. Whereas, whereas BJ, uh, Trapper liked the ladies, you know, even though he was married, he would, he would date as many people as Hawkeye did. He, you know, there was, there's an adultery storyline in the first five seasons where they kind of phase it out, but we'll get into that later on. Uh, whereas BJ was very loyal to his wife. Um, there was one time he may have strayed. We don't know for sure. Some people say he didn't. Some people say he did. I'm on the side that say he did. But overall, he was very dedicated to his wife and wasn't, you know, when Hawkeye would go out dating, you know, chasing nurses, uh, BJ didn't, whereas Trapper did. Um, dedicated surgeon. I don't think he thumbed his nose at the military as much as Trapper did. Um, but again, they nailed it. I think what really helped the, the first episode, two episodes of season four are mainly about getting BJ Honeycutt involved in the TV show MASH, and that really worked. And I think people accepted BJ because there was some chemistry right away between Alan Alda and Mike Farrell, and it worked, and we accepted BJ. Again, if it doesn't, if, the, if people don't accept him, I think the show struggles. I think the show has a terrible time going forward, but it worked, they nailed it, cats off to the writers. Next up, we have Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake, played by McLean Stevenson. Now, Laura, Laura Swift, who played uh, Major Houlihan said that he left because he didn't. He was tired working with an ensemble cast. He didn't want to be second banana. He wanted to be the top dog. He wanted to be the star of the show. And that just was never going to happen with Alan Alda involved, even with Trapper John. His lines, I guess a lot of his scenes were cut out because, you know, they for time and stuff like that. And it's a shame because I loved, I loved Henry Blake. I, when he, th th one of the saddest scenes is when he gets killed off at the end of season three. I mean, it, it is a sad, sad scene. You, you, the acting is so good at it, you, you can't help. I mean, I think I was 11 at the time. I remember crying. I still watch it and get choked up going, oh my God, Henry, I love Henry Blake. But anyway, he was killed off. And, and again, he didn't get to go home to his family. But again, war is hell. War is, war is not a pretty thing. So he had three young kids, a wife. Well, they, you know, they're, they're fatherless and husbandless or whatever you want to say, a widow. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but anyway, but he was, you know, he also, but he also did like the ladies. He, he was, he did, he wasn't faithful to his wife and, but his replacement, Colonel uh, Sherman Potter was regular army, whereas, uh, whereas McLean Stevenson, uh, Henry Blake was not regular army. He was the exact opposite, but I think they did a great job on this one because instead of Colonel Potter coming in and acting like Frank Burns, when Frank Burns would take charge, where they had snap inspections, they had roll call, all that different stuff. He knew he was coming into a good situation. I think the scene where he's in with Radar, the opening scene where they're in the office and Radar hears choppers and he sees how the doctors, the nurses, the corpsmen, all the crew, everyone there reacts to help the uh, injured. 
He realized, okay, I'm in a good situation. I'm going to demand command respect, but I'm going to earn the respect and and not act like Frank Burns, where you have to respect me because I have I'm a major. I'm 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 higher rank than you. So I think they did a good job with that. He was he was he was a father figure, and he had the one liners, and but he you know he he adapted to the situation in hand. And I think they made the right decision. I think having someone come in there and being like Frank Burns every day, the show would have got tired and got old. So hats off to the writers again. Great job in replacing Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake. Uh, next up we have Major Frank Burns, played by Larry Linville. Uh, Frank was not a nice guy. He was not a nice character. Uh, Larry Linville was a nice guy, but he he, he left the show. I guess he had, he had a five-year contract. After the fifth season, they offered him a two-year extension. He declined. He was tired of playing the, the negative, cartoonish guy. You know, he thought the character had gone as far as he could take it. He just, he had burnt out on playing Frank Burns. And I think they're right. How, how often, how far could you, because he had really started slipping. In season four, he starts slipping mentally where the fatigue and stress of being part of the, of, of what he's doing has just gotten to him. And of course, you know, he had an affair with uh, Hot Lips Houlihan. At the end, I think this is breaking the trend after he leaves because they break the trend of adultery being part of a storyline. Again, I checked, I checked uh, you know, the websites and I can't find anything where they consciously did it, but I think, I think they did. I'm going to say they did because maybe they were getting some heat. I don't know. But it does start phasing out of the storylines. Uh, he was a terrible surgeon, a terrible person, but you kind of feel bad for him because when you see his, when he talks about his childhood, it's almost like he was abused and he was mistreated. And so you, you kind of feel bad for him, but then again, he's such a bad guy, so it's hard to feel bad for him. But anyway, they replaced him with uh, Major Charles Emerson Winchester, who's the ex uh, played by David August Theaters, who's the, the exact opposite of Frank Burns. He was a cop, he was a great surgeon. He was from Harvard Medical, uh, graduated from Harvard Medical School, whereas Frank Burns flunked out of med school twice. Um, so he was completely different. He was pompous, he was arrogant. I didn't really like him at first. I did mess Frank, um, but I grew to like him. I grew to like Charles Winchester, because they were going in a different direction at the time. It was coming more of a dramedy instead of a comedy. Uh, not that it wasn't, you know, they, they had dramatic scenes in the first five seasons, but it was changing and evolving. He couldn't be pushed around like Frank Burns could do because he, he was smart. He was he was as as good a surgeon as Hawkeye. And again, at first I didn't like it, but I grew to like him. I don't think I ever loved him, but I did like him. And I, I thought, okay, they did replace him. And the show stayed popular, so how can you complain? And the final replacement was Walter Radar O'Reilly, played by Gary Berghoff. Again, several reasons on why he left the show. Uh, he was burning out. He was tired of playing Radar. <coughs> Excuse me. He wanted to play more, uh, spend more time with his family. Now with Radar, they did they didn't really have to replace him because Klinger just basically took over his job, and he was doing that from time to time in seasons uh, six, you know, seven, and so on. Um, but Radar, they did a great job of being naive farm boy in the first few seasons to being a man at the final season because he it, you have that scene with him and Hawkeye, and I love him and Hawkeye together. The chemistry between the two actors has always been perfect, but when he, when uh, Radar gets wounded and Hawkeye feels bad about it, they have the argument. Hawkeye calls him a ninny and he stands up to him. And he goes, you, know, you have to worship me, worship me. And he goes, I'd rather not. You can see he's slowly growing and he, over time he's growing, growing, growing. And then when he leaves, he leaves his teddy bear behind. And so it symbolizes that yes, he's become a man, he's grown. He's, he, he doesn't need his teddy bear for security anymore. And so, I thought, you know, I hate to see, hate to see Radar go, but I think he, like he said, he took the character as far as he could, and I, I, I believe that. I think that sometimes a character, you know, the show went on for eleven years. It probably went on a little too long. Still, again, one of my favorite shows. If, if you have any comments, you have any suggestions, or you, you think I said something wrong, or you said something right, put it in the comment section. Let's get some dialogue going because this was a great show, and a lot to talk about. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe. Give us that thumbs up and click the little bell indicator to let you know when the next Crazy Hank TV episode is up. And next we'll be talking about something from The Office. Should be up Monday. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here. Bye. Thanks.